G'day, I'm Blake Ryan. Just going to um, pass on some thoughts on Sorcerer, a new supplement for um, Mage the Ascension, 20th edition. So, Sorcerer is a yeah 113 page book and that shares a setting for Mage the Ascension, 20th edition. I'll just share the cover. So yeah, it's got the usual mage sort of purple background there with quite a vivid picture of someone doing a ritual or thinking they're doing a ritual there yeah, so it's quite a striking cover i like it yeah just flicking through the book uh yeah at this point i'll, I'll happily play or run this game it looks really interesting i'm gonna dig into it the you know, mechanics are you know sort of comprehensive but not too deep it's not yeah it doesn't make sense it's all one to five dot stuff at all fairly uh, fairly intuitive it shares the usual world of darkness attributes and skills and talents and knowledges and that's all the same standard list so it's not hard to get the hang of and when you do like an awareness check you do wits dice plus awareness dice and roll against target number six and how, how many successes you get it's all fairly standard world of darkness so um i'll show you some one of the pictures of art just to show you what the book's like just yeah so we've got this looks like some sort of uh werewolf or fairy possibly attacking possibly assisting this person with some sort of exorcism or maybe that's how they use their psychic powers so only a few colors but still quite a um evocative picture in some sort of subway or underground car park perhaps but yeah i quite like the art that's quite well done so okay um yeah hyperlink contacts page is quite thorough gets you to anywhere you need in the book and you just go from the contents to where you need to go and the layout's pretty pretty good two column throughout yeah nicely it's an easy read it's not a uh, wall of text rubbish none of that it's it's it's, it's a nice looking book Okay, so generally you have sorcerers, they're not mages, even though they're in the major setting world, but they do do magical things or psychic things. So they're generally in two groups of hedge wizards, which have a set kind of magic, which are all one to five dots. That's still fairly uh, intuitive. And examples would be illusions and weather control. Uh, psychics have different powers. They're more specific like precognition or pyrokinesis, that is using your mind to set stuff on fire. And at the start, you choose whether you're going to be head wizard or psychic, and then later on, you can pay a chunk of experience points, yeah, and expand. You're, you know, you, you're a bit more narrowed focus than a mage in Mage the Ascension, but don't let that fool you. You can do some pretty cool stuff. Um, what it reminds me of is the Magicians TV series and The Order, which is a magician slash werewolf series on uh, Netflix. Can you use Sorcerer on its own for like a campaign of Sorcerers with Hedge Wizards or Psychics? You can, absolutely. Uh, it is in the world of Maid's Ascension, so you can, they can be associated with the traditions or the crafts or the technocracy or whatever. Or you can use the affiliations, which is the groups of Sorcerers. Some of them are weird in a, in a cool way, and some of them are seriously cool, and I have no hesitation using straight away. You can also use them for a mixed party if you want to have a couple of psychics in with a, a group of mages. It's, yeah, it's not hard to get your head around the mechanics of how they work at all. It's, it's quite user friendly. And I, I would recommend this as a, an onboarding for people less familiar with mage to have a go at a sorcerer first and then sort of scale up to the more complex but creative uh, sort of requirement of the mage magic system. And I do mean that in a good way. Um, so yeah, it's, it, it all looks really cool. I'm looking forward to getting uh, my teeth into it, as they say. So I'm just going to do a quick platus of a few rolls just to see how it goes. So I've made up uh, Narelle. She's a psychic courier, so she's got some psychic powers, and she's also a courier as a day job. Um, her affiliation is Arcanum, which is one of the groups um, who I think are in one of the other groups' uh, books as well. We are like librarian researchers. A bit Liberian, a bit Indiana Jones sort of thing. Actually, they remind me of the Talamasca from Anne Rice novels. So, Norell's heard about this cult that's in town, we'll say London, England, and 
she's you know seen them some graffiti, some marks on the tele- telephone poles or electricity poles. So I'll just do a, what are we going to do? A cult roll. We'll say intelligence occult to try and figure out. Um, so she's got two intelligence, two occult, so it's going to be four dice. So that's 40, 10. And going for the target number six. Hmm. She's got two successes. So, all right. So she finds, by looking at the symbols around town, she sort of locates where she thinks they're working out of with their little secret signals and everything. And she talks to a few people in the area using her telepathy to try and see if they know anything, see if they can give away something that's useful to her to figure out what this cult's up to. So... She's got two in telepathy, so she can see their inner thoughts if she's successful with it. She'll spend her willpower to activate that because it's two dots to get inner thoughts. That'll take two actions to get it. So she'll have a chat and you know buy them a kebab or coffee or whatever it is. And yes, let's just see. I think I've got to actually roll something now. Da, 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 da. Roll willpower plus. Ah, okay, good. So it's a two dot effect. So the target number is three plus that. So five. And I've got to roll my willpower against that. So five dice against target number five. It's easy enough. And one, two, three. Above six. So bam. Three successes. Yeah. The uh, managers to find out where this cult are hiding, or where one of their people are, what they like a vision of one of their faces. And now, I think I'll get her into a fight with one of them, so we can see two different powers at once. So, she's got Wits plus Dex is four. This guy, Haskell, he's a child of Osiris, but he's gone off the deep end. He's trying to do some dark magic. He is... Probably, if he hasn't been ostracized by his uh, affiliation or his, his group, he probably will be soon. So that's why she's going to target him. But his wits and dex is one higher. So he's going to go first. So he's going to do Fira. What's that? He's got, he's a hedge wizard, not a psychic. So he's got Fira. Da, 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 da. Mm. So he's going to try and call a spirit. So he'll spend a willpower and he's going to take three turns to do that. So while he's doing that, he, he thinks, oh, you know, this, this will scare her off. And if not, the spirit will track her down. So either way, he's, he's going to conjure this spirit, summon his spirit. Hang on. He's still got a roll to do that, doesn't he? So that's a thing of three. He's got three dice. Target number of six because it's three plus that. So oh my wow, five dice and five successes. Yikes. Okay, so he's doing really well. <laughs> Summoning this spirit, but it still takes three actions. So in the meantime, the real is going to blast him with pyromancy. Oh, hang on. That's three as well. That's interesting. So, yeah, it looks like it's so because he'll be able to summon the spirit and it'll grab her at the same time as she sets him on fire with pyromancy so hmm things are going downhill for both of them that's all right that's the way it goes <laughs> all righty so yeah no it's it's really interesting the way it's the way it's set up but yeah it should be good it's definitely worth a look highly recommended as onboarding or if you're familiar to mage the ascension already all right Take care.